Here they come. Okay, time to put the piglets in with the baby goats. Oh my gosh, this is mayhem right now. <laughs> Trying to get them all in here. You've got one right here. <laughs> baby goats are a little cautious. Big, 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 big. Well, the only one that seems to be interested in the pigs is little Delilah, but that's probably because <laughs> Winston, she can't. Winston likes them, and he just doesn't want to go down there. Come on, Winston. They all want to stay up here on the mountain instead. Oh, did you see that slide? <laughs> oh, Delilah, maybe, maybe Delilah, this isn't what you... good for you. <laughs> this probably isn't the best place. Oh, well, we gave them grain so that they can eat first before they play. We're not sure if it's gonna work because <laughs> pigs just have this constant drive to eat and to forage, not necessarily to play. Goody, goody. So Kevin's holding on to Delilah to keep her out of the bunch here. And then these goats don't care at all about the pigs. No. <laughs> They just want to play on this mountain. We let the mamas out earlier so that they wouldn't have to fight with the pigs. And they were happy to be let out so that they could go out and play around in the pasture for a little bit. Kevin, do we need to have a talk about your glasses? Why? <laughs> because because they don't have a side on there, it pushes against your head really hard. No, look, look how sturdy they are. <laughs> Doris is having some dominance issues out there. She wants to control everybody. Yeah. Tilly and Penny are fighting back there. Oh man. They haven't seen each other in a while, so yeah. now they gotta fight it out. Right. They usually fight every morning though, so I'm not surprised that those two are fighting. Yeah. Where's Willow? All the way over there. <laughs> just over there eating. eating some She's just the most relaxed goat. Just eating with Stella and Luna. All right. Okay, we want you guys to be friends. Like, She's gonna fall right in that hole. She's like, is this food? She's like, what is happening? Is there food on this stump? You gotta jump, pig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Here you go. There's a pig. Just a lot of spots. Play with the pigs. There you go, snip it. Smells good. <laughs> well, they don't want anything to do with them. The pigs don't even see them, apparently. <laughs> yeah, the pigs don't care at all. Hey, get that pig. Get him. Yeah, why don't you chew on that pig? <laughs> she did a little like. <laughs> what the heck? That ain't no goat. Well, they don't play with each other very much. What are you gonna do? They do like this fresh grass yeah. that they haven't seen before. They're gonna eat that up. We get asked a lot if we're going to bring Ron back, who is the dad of all of these piglets here. And so here's the answer to that question. He definitely can't come back right now because the babies would get hurt. Right now he's covering some sows at our friend's house and we'll probably have him back in the fall when it'll be safe for him to be here and Hermione will be ready to breed again. The baby goats have been using the tower so much more lately and it's so cute to watch. It is cute. They've all figured it out. Well, all except little Delilah over there. She is definitely a little biter as well. She still tries. She just goes around and bites the dirt. She bites, the <laughs> she bites little bits of grass. She's she loves chewing on stuff.
The one I'm trying to record and I mess up. Well, well, well. <laughs> These new chickens still haven't figured out the nesting boxes because they're laying right here next to the door. She used to like to go inside that box, but we covered it up. Yeah, Kevin covered up that box because it was hard to reach in anyway. And she's going to just lay over there. There's empty nesting boxes right behind you. After we let all of the mamas and babies out, we get started on the morning chores. First we feed Luna, Stella, Fern, and Penny, and then we get started on milking all of the mama goats. Now we're not fully milking them out yet. Instead, we're just doing this to check on their udders and make sure that they're producing milk evenly between their teats, feeding them some grain and sunflower seeds, and just getting them used to the routine of coming into the milking station and getting up on the stand. Right now, Willow doesn't have much milk, but that's a good sign because that means that she's feeding her babies. After everything's done, we just gather the eggs and make sure that everybody is happy and healthy. Okay, so I'm gonna set a timer and then uh, Kevin, you count uh, Tatum's respirations and I'm gonna count oh. Delilah's, okay? okay? Sound good? Okay. Respirations, are those breathing? Yeah, how many times they breathe in and out. Okay, ready? Okay, ready, go. I did 30 seconds, what was it? About 30. About 30 in that time frame? I think so. And hers was like 90. What? Yeah, so three times. She does kind of go really fast. So as you guys know, Delilah was born with a heart problem that we noticed about a week after she was born. She breathes really fast, and on the ultrasound, the vet said that her heart was larger than normal and leaking fluid. So we've been working closely with the vet, trying to decide what to do with Delilah. We've been giving her a shot of the Lasix every day, which is just a way for her body to get rid of a little bit extra fluid, but it's a tough one because we don't want her to suffer, but we don't want to give in too soon and put her down. So we're gonna keep watching her, gonna keep her cool, and um, in a few days, we're gonna have the vet come by and do another ultrasound and see if her heart has improved at all. Corn is looking good guys. Now it just needs to pop up. As you guys know, I've been trying to figure out what to do with this space right next to the garden, and I think I've figured it out. I used half of it to plant three new dwarf mulberry trees, and then the other half, we're gonna plant grains. This year, it's gonna be corn. I consulted with Angela from Growing in the Garden, and she helped me figure out the best way to grow corn in the grass. So here's how we did it. First we laid down a good row of compost, and then we laid down some weed cloth to help make sure that the grass doesn't completely overtake the corn. We cut holes in the weed cloth, and then I realized I should have done this earlier, but we decided to add on top of the compost a little bit of our native soil so that it can hold the moisture better and things don't just dry up really quick. After that, we planted the corn and covered the whole thing with bird netting so nothing can get in and eat them while they're sprouting. I know I've tried corn a million times here in Arizona, but I'm excited about it this year because it's gonna get flood irrigation and it's also gonna have the grass roots to help hold the corn up in our monsoon storms. So hopefully this is gonna work out. Are you ready? This is how you make pasta. Hey, you guys have to get out of the kitchen. Yeah, you guys have to get out of the kitchen. 
Oh, and you're watching Trent. Okay. <laughs> you made a haul. Ethan, don't go in your room. Stay in here. But it's Twilight. Can you guess what movie this is? How come you're not starting with one? With one what? It is the first movie. Oh, we are. No, it's not. I turned on the second one because we already watched the first one, didn't we? We did? the whole series. I know, but we watched the first one again. Right? No. No? Okay, okay, fine. Well, if you guys thought we were kidding about how much we love Twilight, you're wrong. Because we watch it pretty much every night. <laughs> it's like a bad dream with vampires. <laughs> so tonight I'm trying something that I haven't tried really ever before, and that's homemade pasta. I got this pretty cool pasta roller, and Lydia and I are going to try our hand at ravioli tonight. I'll put the link in the description below of the pasta machine we bought, as well as the recipe we used. I wish we would have had ricotta, but all I had was some leftover goat cheese, so we used that with some Parmesan and got to work. We boiled the ravioli, mixed up a creamy tomato sauce, and called it good. Okay, so it just twice a day lets it out here just like this. Okay. And they can come eat from the hula hoop and have lots of fun. Pretty fancy design. Yeah. They won't come over here while we're here though. Nope. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. <gasps> here they come. I think they're scared of me a little bit. Alright, so Kevin has a plan, guys, with this year's fish. Yes. They are going to grow really big. Okay. And we're gonna eat them right before it gets cold, like in December. Okay. But catfish can go in the cold, right? It's just the tilapia. That's true. That's true. But the goal is to get them to wait by then, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Feeding them like this twice a day, we eat them really big. So this year, this will be the year that we can eat our fish that we've grown in our pond. I can feel it. And some of you have wondered about my shoes and why they're all cut to pieces like this. Because I have to do Mr. Rogers like 10 times a day because I go in and out of the house to do chores and stuff. <laughs> and I'm always taking off my shoes. And so. You made your own slip-on shoes. You have to be able to take off shoes fast when you're doing it 20 times a day. So these are work boots. Business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> okay. Really good. Watching today's video guys if you want to see a video where baby willow was introduced to our turkey click here 